Hey everyone and welcome to another video. So today we're taking another look at iOS 16 and today we're basically just having a quick overview and my thoughts on what it's been like having this installed on my daily driver. So I did actually say it during my sort of first look, the live stream that I did on, on the day it was released that I don't recommend people put this on their daily driver. Um, however, there was one feature that I wanted to actually check and that's why I actually updated it on this particular phone and the feature I wanted to check was cinematic mode. So a lot of people have mentioned that they they think that cinematic mode has been improved quite a bit and I would actually agree with that to an extent. So what they've actually done with iOS 16 is they've got rid of that sort of haloing effect that we used to get around objects. So whenever you're, you're using any type of cinematic video the cutouts and what it's focusing on still isn't perfect. That can still be very hit and miss and and most of the time, in particular in this room, whenever I actually try making a video, it'll actually give me the, the sort of warning saying there's not enough light. Right now, as you can see, this is the same amount of light that I actually use the iPhone in and it's more than enough light to actually record a normal video, but not enough for, for where it can actually do all the processing that cinematic video needs. I did do a few quick tests just to see how well it's updated. And as I say, the haloing that you got, the very obvious haloing around around objects that I think has gone. Where it still struggles is with the actual depth sort of estimation that it makes. So in the sort of scene where I, I recorded some of my, my daughter's toys in the garden, on the car you can see where it struggles to actually detect what's the sort of front of the car and what's the back. So when you're actually looking through the, the front of the car, you can see the back corner sort of uh, C pillar and that should be blurred out in that video. But what it actually does is because it kind of detects it as all one object, it puts it all in focus and just blurs the grass in between. So the processing side of things still needs a little bit of work, but yeah, um, it's, it's definitely better than it was before. The other things that I wanted to check and one of the biggest sort of features that I think most people probably won't even mention or will just go under the radar is the haptic feedback. So whenever you actually type now, you actually get some haptic feedback from the keyboard itself. Uh, you can enable that, I believe it is in sound and haptics. And then if you come down um, keyboard and then you, it, ordinarily it's like this, so it's disabled by default. And what you have to do is actually enable it manually yourself. And once you've enabled it, it basically just gives you haptic feedback whenever you're using the keyboard. And it's, it's just such a, a better typing experience. And it just improves the whole sort of uh, feel of iOS 16. It makes it feel a bit different. Uh, I know Android have had that for quite a while. Um, iOS generally hasn't had it probably to do with uh, battery life in an attempt to try and maximize the, the sort of uh, battery life. But I think the, these phones now, and in particular the Pro phones or the, the Mac size phones, they've got so good when it comes to battery life that I don't think that's really an issue anymore. Now, as, as we've segued onto battery life, what has battery life been like on the betas? So as you can see, my battery is on 39% and we're only, right now it's 5.23 p.m. Um, I was on morning shift, so I woke up at four o'clock this morning. Now, generally, whenever I'm on morning shift and I do this kind of uh, normal routine for my day, um, I, at the end of the day, have roughly around about 40% battery life remaining. So as you can see, battery life is pretty bad. Um, having said that though, I have made quite a bit of video today for something completely separate to the YouTube channel. I have made quite quite a lot of uh, video. I wouldn't say massive amounts, but probably I'd say maybe 10 to 20 minutes of the camera being uh, recording. And then um, I've also done some uploading as well of that particular video. So it's had use, it's been in use pretty much throughout the day. But as I, as I mentioned, this kind of usage generally on iOS 15, I was getting to around uh, the end of the day, about 10, half, half 10, 11 o'clock in the evening, and I was still having 40% battery remaining. As you can see, the watch also is, is suffering quite badly as well. What I actually did yesterday was I fully charged it in order to test the new sleep tracking. Essentially, I only took it off charge when I was actually going to bed. Um, and it's been on charge since I came home at 2 p.m. today and it's not charged up much. I think it was on around about 28%. So even though I've, I've connected it to the fast charger, 
something about it it just doesn't seem to be enabling fast charging at the moment so that's that's a bit of a, a downside of the upgrade unfortunately on the watch i don't believe i can actually downgrade back to a watch os 8 on the iphone i could potentially but i think going with my normal sort of usage i'll still be able to get through a day using the beta so i don't think i will be will be downgrading again taking a quick look at the lock screens which is obviously the most obvious change that was mentioned in the keynote itself i have set up a few different ones so this this is whether one is my normal one and this same thing again is it has got bugs so essentially on the first day when i actually uh installed it um it's been hot all this week and last two days it's been quite hot um i was at work and despite it being overcast but um the sun kind of breaking through the clouds the the phone was actually showing rain um, it didn't rain at all yesterday and yet this this was actually showing rain up until around about 6 6 p.m and then it actually changed to overcast so the weather sort of uh, lock screen that they've got where it gives you a live update and it is using my location i did double check i made sure that is actually using my more exact location rather than just being my my home city um, but even still it's it's not uh it's it, it's not very accurate the temperature there is accurate but once you actually look at what it's doing that doesn't seem to be very accurate itself on the lock screen itself so i have if we just go to customize i have the battery ones the battery widgets so i've got the phone the watch uh, the temperature one and then just calendar calendar updates and then up, up here I've got the uh, sunrise and sunset times for my prayer times as well so that that does actually help quite a bit because it saves me having to have a weather or, or one of the weather widgets uh, I believe if we come down so we did have this one so the sun events I no longer have to use that because I can actually add it to the the time or the, the date menu at the top there um, if you do want to actually change some of these by the way what you do is once you've added it you click onto it a second time and then you can actually change it ordinarily it'll be on automatic and say for example if you have an apple watch it'll only ever display the apple watch battery life until you disconnect um, the apple watch and then it will show the iphone whereas this way you can untick automatic and you can actually choose which device you want to actually use and obviously if you have airpods connected you can select them as well and it'll automatically go to those ones as well similar thing with the weather so you can click onto it once you've added it and you can actually make changes on the calendar one you can choose between different calendars or having uh, it just mirror the phone which is basically what I want it to do coming back to the other uh, sort of screens that I've set up so I did set one up for work and this is actually using a focus mode and if we just come into this you'll notice that once I actually unlock it's it's using the focus mode so it's changed the icons I have only a few icons on screen itself if we come back and I switch back you'll see how, how everything comes back again. And I did also create one more that I wanted to use for movie time. So this one only has the sort of information that I need it to have when I want to focus basically in, on the th home theater. And that is literally just the two apps for uh, the projector itself. Coming back to the sort of options, if you do go to the end and you hit add, this is where it gives you all of your different types. So along the top, you have all your, all your types just there. You could choose from the color ones, the astronomy, weather, emoji, photo shuffle, photos, and people. The people one, obviously this one will use your photos and it will automatically kind of pick out the, the right ones. Out of all of these, I think the, the two that I actually like are just the, the collections, this particular collections one and also the astronomy one as well um, they're the two sort of uh, ones that look the best and have the best effect when you actually uh, unlock the phone whereas i think the one that adds the most functionality is actually the weather one simply because you don't then need to use any of your your weather your, your general sort of rain or, or sunshine ones you can just have it as the temperature or use that for something else and obviously we've, we've already seen that you can you can add uh, quite quite a lot of different widgets uh, at the moment it's all first party um, I believe all th third party ones will also get added onto here and for a lot of developers I think it will 
be a case of it's very similar to the watch complications. So once they design one, I believe they might actually be transferable between the two. Okay, so the other sort of big feature that was mentioned um, was regarding the messages and the mail app and how you can unsend messages or mail once you've actually sent it. Now in the mail app, the way it works is there's a slight delay once you've actually sent the email. And if you go back onto the main page, it'll actually give you an option at the bottom where you can actually click on send uh, very quickly. If you don't do that, then after I think it's maybe three to five seconds, it then sends the actual uh, email through. Okay, so one final thing is the only app that I've actually experienced that has failed or broken as a result of the iOS 16 update is my Eufy security app. So for some reason, this just doesn't log in. So it seems to think it's either a different device or different location. I don't know whether Apple have changed something with regards to the location privacy in iOS 16, but it just won't log in. It brings up a 401 error whilst it's still logging in on all the other devices perfectly fine. So I believe that is something related to iOS 16. Everything else seems to be working just fine. As I said, I'm, I didn't want to delve too deep into every tiny little feature or change, but just give you an idea in terms of my experience. It's been very, very similar, almost identical to iOS 15 in terms of my usage. So there's very little that has actually changed in terms of the usage, apart from the HomeKit app or the Home app, and also the extra functionality from the lock screen where you can just glance at stuff very quickly. Um, I don't like the fact that we don't have the percentage on the lock screen, so they really need to add the percentage to these, because otherwise, yeah, you get, you get a rough idea in terms of how much percentage you have left over, but we know everybody wants that, that number. We want to be able to see that number for how much is actually remaining. And um, I'm really hoping that they do actually add that before the final release. In terms of other crashes and everything, um, I think I've only had one and that was in the home app. And that was, if I, I'll try and replicate what, what actually happened. So say for example, I want to move this particular icon. So if I drag it and move it there and then I'll move it back. So it brings up the little expansion arrow just there and clicking on it is meant to do this. But if I do that on the favorites, so if I try the same thing with the front room light, theater lights and I click the same icon, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't expand. So in your favorites, you can't actually have it any bigger. So what I believe I did was I used the two fingers and I just tried zooming out just to make it bigger and that actually crashed the whole app. It did actually bring up a report that it wanted me to send out. So I did fill that out and send that off. But it does look like when you're actually editing these, you can, you can make that particular change in the normal rooms, but you can't do that in the favorites. And even still, it still takes you to that full pain rather than making use of that, that real estate and actually turning it on. So for, for this particular accessory, that's kind of a pointless feature because you still have to click very, very precisely. So the extra real estate doesn't really benefit you. So yeah, that's it for this particular video. I will have more videos coming on iOS 16. So if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe and also hit the notification bell. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload any new videos. And also I'd really appreciate if you also give this video a thumbs up. If you do have any questions or any things that you wanna want me to concentrate on or make a video on in particular, then drop them down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to actually answer them or do a follow up video. I am also planning to do a live stream because I think that might be an easier way of actually uh, answering any questions that you have so if you're interested in a live stream once again just drop that in the comment section below as well so until the next one thanks very much for watching